If you guys are struggling to win games in Iron Banner Rift, whether it be as a fire team or just as a solo player, today is your lucky day because I'm actually going to give you guys some pretty good tips and some tricks on how you can actually win some Iron Banner games, whether you're a fire team or a solo player. Today's video is definitely going to help you guys out. And hopefully I can help you guys learn something new about Iron Banner or just playing Rift in general to help you guys come out with a few more wins over this next week of Iron Banner. So we're going to start out this video guys with the fire team tips as most people will be playing with a fire team as Iron Banner and Rift together are pretty much team based games. And 6v6 and Iron Banner especially, a lot of people run a team. So we're going to start out with the fire team tips today. If you're a solo player, stick towards the end of the video. I'm going to give you guys some tips towards the end. So don't worry guys, you will be getting some tips as well. But let's get started guys with these fire team tips today and we're going to start out with some tips with running the spark and really just collecting the spark in general. So if you're rocking a fire team it's very important for you guys or most of you guys at least to all be in a party chat and communicate. Rift is a pretty easy game mode especially if you guys have some teamwork It'll, you'll be able to pretty much demolish any other team that you guys are against. So just simply getting in a party chat and using a little bit of teamwork will definitely help you guys come out on top. Now another thing to do if you guys are playing in a fire team is to try to have one person be the designated spark runner throughout all of your games. If you guys are all battling trying to run the spark because you guys are getting greedy for points or you guys just want to pick up the spark because it's fun, it's really hard to win games. It's best just to have a designated spark runner. That way every time no one's getting confused and it's a lot more strategic. That way every single time the same person can run the spark and all the other people can play defense and help protect him on the way and you'll get better and better every match by doing that. So it is very important to have one designated spark runner. If you're a solo player, you kind of want to go out of your way to just be that designated spark runner, but we'll get into more of that later. So if you are the person running the spark and you're in a fire team, guys, it's very important that you are never the person that is in the front of your fire team. As you look on your minimap, you're going to see a bunch of green dots, like pretty much telling you where your fire team is. You know, pretty much everyone knows how to use the radar. But if you see people behind you on the radar, what you want to make sure you're doing if you're running the spark is never make sure you're at the front line. If you're at the front line, the way the spawns work in Rift is they're never going to spawn anywhere but at their spark. So they're always going to be spawning in front of you. And it's very important that if you're the spark runner to be behind a couple of teammates. That way you don't get killed really easily. And you don't have three or four of the enemy teammates all on you, focused on you, because you have no one near you. So if you're by yourself with the spark, you definitely want to run back to your spawn. Just keep in mind you do have a minute and a half to capture the spark. It's not a race. You don't have to rush straight to the rift and capture it. You can take plenty of time to run back to your spawn, get, get situated, get with a couple of teammates, and then you can all push together as a team, and it makes things a lot easier, and you're pretty much a guaranteed capture every time. Now, also, if you are the designated spark runner, but let's say you're not able to actually pick up the spark, it's always very important that another teammate picks it up. If the designated spark runner is not there, the other person or just anybody on the team wants to pick up that spark just to make sure that you get the points for capturing the spark. Every time that you pick up the spark, you get points. So you want to make sure that the other team doesn't do that. And it's very important just to pick up the spark as soon as possible. And if anything is a race, it's definitely just picking up that spark, not capturing. Now, another thing in Rift to keep a track of is your supers. Now, I'm rocking Bubble because it's an extremely defensive super, but it also can be used offensively as well. So if the spark is extremely crowded by a bunch of enemies, I can always throw my bubble down there, and then me and my teammates can all get in there as a team and just hold it down. So it's very important to keep track of your supers. If you're rocking something like Blade Dancer or Stormcaller, you really don't want to use that super until you're with your Spark Runner. If the Spark Runner is like right behind you and you have a Stormcaller, it's really easy just to pop your Stormcaller or Hammers or Blade or any sort of super aggressive super and just push right into their spawn and clear out a couple rooms. That way your Spark Runner can actually run through and get the capture super easily. So if you're a Blade, a Stormcaller or Hammers, it's kind of important that you don't pick up the Spark. You kind of can't pop your supers if you have the Spark. So, if you have one of those supers, you don't really want to be the designated spark runner. It's best to let someone else do that role. That way you can play defense or offense pretty easily. That way if they have the spark, you can shut them down with your super. And vice versa, if your team has the spark and you need to clear out a room, a storm caller or hammers is the easiest way to do it. You see here me using my bubble offensively. I pop the bubble so that my teammate and the spark will have a pretty good place to come. I'm rocking armor of light so you're pretty much invincible anytime you're in the bubble, which makes it really awesome if you're the spark runner. You can always count on me to have a bubble up by the rift. That way you have infinite health and if you're ever getting shot or you need a quick little break, you can take one in my bubble and I can defend you. And that's where all the teamwork really comes into play. If you have one or two people in a bubble defending your spark, it's pretty hard to lose it and it's pretty much a guarantee that your bubble is going to last like a minute. So it's a pretty easy way to lock down a room or to clear some more place out really fast if you need to advance with the spark and allow your runner to push up and actually score. And the same can be done, like I said before, with bubble, hammers, or a stormcaller. It's just really any of those aggressive supers. You just need to use them properly. 
So those are pretty much all the tips I can give you guys as a fire team. So from here on out, I'm going to give you guys some tips if you're a solo player. Now, if you're a fire team player, don't worry. Some of these tips will still help you out as well. But for now, we're just going to stick with a couple of tips for the just strictly solo players so that they can come out on top and actually win a couple of games, hopefully without a fire team. So if you're a solo player, guys, it's, you need to take every game super seriously. You're most likely going to be going up against some sort of a fire team. You might not be going up against a fire team of six every game, but it's pretty much a guarantee that you're going to be going up against at least a fire team of two or three. So every single game, you actually need to take extremely seriously. You want to be rocking your best gear, your best armor and weapons for the map. Whatever you think that you can do the best with is what you want to be using as well as your supers. Now you want to have mostly an aggressive super if you're playing by yourself. You kind of have to have to do a lot of the work, which is what I said before. If you're playing by yourself, you do need to make yourself the designated spark runner. So what I like to do is if I'm running by myself, and I know not every single person is a titan, but if I'm rocking by myself and I am on my titan, what I like to do is I like to run bubble as usual, and I'll throw the bubble down on the rift every single time that I want to pick up the spark, giving me that bonus armor of light. Now also if you're the designated spark runner, it's very important, like if you're a Titan, you want to be rocking Dune Marchers or Twilight Garrison. Those additional movements and that bonus agility is actually going to help you a lot, especially when running the Spark. You're going to be able to get to the Rift faster, and you're also going to be able to dodge a lot more of the enemy shots and run away if you're in a sticky situation. So it's definitely best to run some sort of exotic that's going to make your movement better, whether it be Twilight, Frosties, Bones of EAO. It really is just completely up to you and your subclass build, so just pick the exotic that suits you best and keep that on for the duration of Rift. Now for this next tip, this is actually for solo players and fire team players alike. So if you are playing with Rift and someone else picks up the spark like they're being super greedy or you're just not the designated spark runner or the other team guy just gets lucky and picks up the spark instead of you, you want to be playing the objective pretty aggressively. So anytime that the spark gets picked up, it's best if you're really right next to your spark runner defending him. Now not every single person can be right next to the spark runner at all times, so it's actually best to actually play the spawns. Like I said before, Every single time that the enemy spawns in, unless you're all crowded around their rift, they're going to spawn in next to their rift pretty much every single time. Without a doubt, it's almost always a guarantee that they're going to spawn there. So if you don't have the spark, and you're able to get near the, the rift, and the spark runner's not there yet, you want to pretty much stay there and camp a little bit and try to get a couple spawn kills. You want to make sure that that area is as clear as possible for the rift runner. They're going to have a lot of shots coming their way, and everyone's going to want to kill them more and more the closer that they get to the rift, so it's best that you're there to play defense or just to make sure that there's no enemies there at all. Now, don't get mad if you don't capture every single time. It's not really possible to score 100% of the time, and you're not always going to be successful. So just keep in mind, every time that you pick up the spark and every time that you gain distance, you're helping your team out more and more. You're getting points every single time you gain distance, and every single time you just simply pick up the spark. So if you're just doing that alone, and the other you can keep the other team from doing that, that's still a good enough way to win. Now kills are still going to count towards the points a little bit, so getting kills and not dying is also kind of important as well, especially when you're in a solo game. But other than that guys, that's pretty much all of the tips that I can give you guys in Rift. I know it can get kind of frustrating when you lose a couple games in a row, especially when playing by yourself. But if you lose more than 5 games, just remember you do get those medallions, so you can lose up to 5 games in a row. And then the next game you win, you'll actually cash in all those medallions for all the missed XP. So it's actually not that big of a deal if you do lose just a couple of games here and there. But once you've lost three or four in a row, it is best to try to switch something up. You don't really want to lose more than five games in a row or you truly will be wasting your time. So hopefully these tips do help out those solo players as well as those fire team players to come out on top and win a couple of more games. Let me know what tip helped you guys out the best in the comments down below. Also drop a like if these tips did help you out and help you to win a few more games. Other than that, guys, take it easy. Have a pretty good day. Hopefully you guys do get a couple more wins, and I will see you guys later on today in another Destiny video. Peace.